Okay, so hello and welcome to another episode of the Online Course Coaching Podcast. I'm Tim Cooper and today we are here with the founder of Spring Framework Guru. That's the website, by the way, if you put a dot there, uh, John Thompson. Now, uh, John was inspired by uh, was it Trevor Page? Yeah, Trevor Page. Yeah, so uh, and, EOF, and, if I remember right, podcast with him. Yeah, cool. So... Uh, John started his website basically just over 12 months ago, has already got tremendous traction, uh, having over 30,000 views a month. So he's come a long way. And over that course of time, he has structured and restructured his his course layouts and, and platforms to increase sales. And just recently, he hit the, the two grand a month sales for his courses which is amazing so john thank you for joining us and could you just start with a little bit of an introduction about yourself uh yeah my name is john thompson uh i've been in the it field for uh, around 20 years uh developer a good part of that uh last 10 15 years i've been focusing on contract development initially i was doing a lot of oracle work and then uh, got into uh, more and more Java. I've been doing Java exclusively for the last decade and almost all around Spring Framework. Um, actually worked for Pivotal as a, a Spring Source consultant, went into some of their clients uh, as a, a Spring Source consultant working for them. And uh, then got to the point in my career where I wanted to start giving back to the community, doing something a little more uh, fulfilling and, and helping people, people learn uh, not only uh, coding, but also some of the frameworks. I felt felt there's a gap of people coming out of uh, college. Uh, they, they learn Java, but they don't learn the frameworks or practical application of the frameworks. And I've been out in the industry for 25 years. I've been uh, a manager running capital projects to a contract developer implementing capital product projects. So been on both sides of the fence, uh, been an employee, been a consultant, uh, definitely know the industry and felt I had a lot, a lot to give back to the community through my experience. Perfect. Okay. So just want to share with people how you got started with the, how you turned your knowledge into income, because this is a big thing that a lot of people are looking at doing these days. And we know that online courses is a booming industry. It's worth many billions of dollars. And lots of people are, are finding ways to turn their knowledge into courses and obviously then into cash. So it'd be fantastic if you share your journey and just show how you know, anybody can turn around and do this successfully in in a, in, in a relatively short period of time i must admit no 12 months isn't no is a yeah you know, um, good time. i don't want to um, make people think it's been an easy journey or anything it, it hasn't it's been a, a lot lot to work work with um i've always been uh, kind of an instructor i guess i um my i have a master's degree in education so early on in my career and I, I did focus on education then uh start working for a software company and just became more and more technical. That's, but it's kind of like getting back to my roots there. But um, after not instructing for two decades and becoming a formal instructor, that's been a, a, a little bit of an experience. Um, but the uh, the journey has been interesting because I, I'm, I'm an expert, um, an expert in the field. So it's hard to teach a novice. I, I really have to sit back and, and think about what people don't know and and sometimes it's like glaringly obvious to me it, it's a, something that happens every day uh in, in my field but someone new new to new to the field it, it's uh really it, it can be totally tripped them up it, mm. but that's what's obvious to me is like oh yeah you just need to do blah and i do that every day but uh, a newbie's not going to know that so it, it's, it's easy to gloss over stuff yeah that is such a very very important point i think we as because we all are experts or, or no topic experts and we just make so many assumptions that people are starting from where we're at and it's important that when we are designing our courses that we've got to go back and basically design courses for the beginner to to, to start at step one and and don't and just don't feel that it's you, know, you teach people to suck eggs because sometimes you actually do have to teach people how to suck eggs. So that's a very, very important point that you've got to go back and cover all the bases and make sure that you are giving step by step, very clear instructions from the outset. Fantastic. 
and as, and as you're saying, it's not it's not an easy road, is it? It's not just you no know, sit down and, and record a couple of videos and away you go. I, I've learned so much um, in the in the last year. It's crazy. It's like um, I listen to podcast with Trevor, and he uh, he focuses on teaching people how to code Java, and it's like um, a spring spring is a framework built on top of Java, the, the Java programming language. And I'm like, well, heck, I can do that with Spring. How hard could that be? <laughs> and uh, it, it's been been quite a bit. I mean, it, uh, build a build a website, and it's not you just put up a website and they'll come. It, you have to have a, a reason for people to come to that website. And uh, mm-hmm. developing the website, the traffic, all the SEO stuff, um, uh, email list, and marketing list, and all, all that. It's uh, been a, a total learning curve. And then. Uh, I'm not a, a WordPress expert by any means. I've definitely become more intimate with WordPress in the last year. Uh, but I mean, that's what I run my platform on. It, it's the natural choice for uh, building a uh, this type of website. Mm. But uh, I've learned a lot about that and the, the plugins. And uh, like I, I started off one of my courses using a, a WordPress plugin, and now I've, I've moved everything over to uh, Teachable and Udemy. Yeah, it, it's easier to have it, it hosted because I had my course up, it's running fine, and then I uh, went through a, a batch of upgrades on the plugins and stuff stopped working. And it's like one plugin doesn't like the other plugin. It's like this is a nightmare to maintain. Yeah, and and and, that, and that's coming from somebody who's technical. Yeah, it's, and, yeah. This, and, and, and this is the point too. Look, I I, I bought um, a plugin, a, Word, a WordPress plugin, ages ago, an LMS thing, and same same deal. I got it all set up, and the there was some some conflict but what we tracked it to was actually my host my host is very very secure and it was blocking api calls in the in the e-commerce side of things so even though things could happen it wasn't allowing the automatic creation of the member into the membership site which then meant that if i wanted to continue down that road i'd have to actually manually trap those payments and create those members myself which i thought you know was going to be a bit of a pain and I thought well if, if that's if that's a problem now that's going to continue to be like there's going to be other issues as you say as you as you run through updates so I think even these days with you know with what's available out there you're probably best going out and, and either going to Teachable or Udemy or if you're going to create on your own website like what I'm doing personally is I'm putting my stuff on wishlist member so I'm not I'm not using an LMS system at all I'm just running Optimize Press on WordPress. Over the top of that, I'm running Wishlist Member, and it's all very, all very clean. But once again, then there's an initial outlay. There's there's money. It's cost me you know, six, seven hundred US just to set that up. Yeah. And then I've got to, then I've got to worry about my own media hosting, as you would have initially when you had your WordPress going. You'd have to find a media host, whether you were going through Vimeo, Wistia, or maybe Amazon Web Web Services. Yeah. So. Uh, no, no problem too is posting all the media and access controls to that um another another issue that concerned me um was just getting into the payments aspect and handling that because i've I've done a lot of stuff with financial services i've worked with the largest credit card processor in the world i did a credit card startup uh as in charge of security for a a credit card database with a lot of very very wealthy people uh Mm -hmm. in the database people like steve case ted leonisus um Larry Summer, that they were in that database. So obviously a, a very prime hacker target. I mm-hmm. didn't sleep very well in those days, but <laughs> but I, I know the responsibilities that come come with handling uh, credit card data and, and personal information, especially uh, with a lot of the privacy laws out there. And it's like, as a, a sole proprietor, I'm like, I don't even want a monkey with that. It's like, here, take it. <laughs> yeah. and well, good, you, go ahead and handle the processing for me. I'm good with that. <laughs> okay, so we, so we decide we're going to to just put everything up on these platforms, which are all pre-built, and it's and it's their problem to make sure that everything all hooks together, and it's their and it's their responsibility to keep the data safe and and the payments safe. Now, coming back to your to your your traffic generation, was the majority of your traffic coming to your website was that organic through very clever SEO through lots of blog posts and 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 topic related information on your pod on your sorry on your website or, or did you actually pay for any advertising along the way? I've done experiments with advertising. Um, it, it, it hasn't paid off very well. I've played with uh, Google ads, Facebook ads, 
Uh, tried Twitter and Twitter was uh, almost utterly useless for uh, driving content to the site. Um, it could be the way I, my experience level with it. The, the, the biggest has been uh, producing quality content. Um, I've got a, a, a series of uh, four articles on how to build a, a website using Spring Boot and Spring MVC. And I, I step people step step by step through it. And that's my, my biggest attractor to the site right now. I've built up a, a series of other uh, articles, uh, some good content, and those all will get 10, 15 hits a day. The, the other four, they get 100 to 200 hits a day. So right. that, that building up that, that quality content, um, the last last few months, I've been putting a lot into the site. I've been focusing more on the course development. Uh, my, my strategy was kind of get the, the site there and start getting some organic traffic flowing there. And then I, I had that and uh, set up a, a mail list that you could subscribe to my newsletter, uh, just trying to build that base. So when I did have a course, I'd have somebody to market to. Yep, so. perfect. That's right. And see, this, this is the thing too, see, and we, and we say this over and over again, is that you want to build a buzz around your course before you build your course. You want, no, you, you want, you want to have that community, you, you want to have that list so that when you actually create your course and you launch your course, then you've got an audience to go to and say, I've done this. And the other thing that we're going to get into is the way that you engage your prospective students or and all your students using pre-launch pages to actually test the waters to see what course to do next, basically. And, and we'll get into that because that's another very important strategy. But yeah, I, I see it the same way. I, I see Facebook and that sort of stuff as interrupt, interruptive advertising. That people don't go onto Facebook to to find out about how to code. They go to check out what their friends are doing. So when they get hit, hit in the face with an, with an ad, okay, if you're going to give them something yeah. useful though, like if you're going to give them a lead magnet, so if you're, if you're going to exchange something useful for their name and address and they're going to get some training and they actually have an interest in that area, that's that's – probably going to be more and that's been my experience if i am leading to a squeeze page and i'm giving them something of value in return and then I, then i can market to them but ultimately we talk we come back to content marketing and we, and education education is, is probably the most covert marketing method known to mankind because you are giving something of value sometimes you're giving your best value away but in return for that now you're getting you're building an audience because then people are getting to know you like you trust you and when you do your courses and they go, well, look, I've seen his other work. I reckon his course is going to be worthwhile and they're going to be more uh, likely to put their hand in the pocket and grab their, their credit card. Yeah. yeah. So, and I, I lead off with a, a free course on the spring framework and that's been uh, my biggest, that's my lead management, but that's been my, my absolute best, uh, best effort as far as getting people in the door and uh, getting them engaged. And it, that's also my top in, engagement or a uh, conversion tool to paid courses is that, that free course. So I've tried running ads to the main paid courses on Facebook and Google, and I just wasted money on those. So, uh, I launched a, a paid course on, on Udemy and, and ran a Facebook camp campaign, spent $60. I had, I don't know, 20, 20, 25,000 views of it. And uh, a few hundred people clicked the link and zero sales. So I, I mm -hmm. blew with 60 bucks on, on nothing. Yeah, I think I, like, that's been my experience too, is uh, is when, you, when, when you're doing those ads, the first content, well, the first the first contact shouldn't just be pushing them straight to a, a, a course sales page. It's, it's just sort of like, there's too much that I know you yet. And then of course, if your course is a premium course, they're not gonna be that, that quick to buy. You, you know, you've got to you know, get them onto your list and, and build that relationship with them. Show, you know, share content with them and then go, by the way, here's this course. Okay, so you've you've gone through, because what what this what this interview today is, is about is how to sell more courses. And, and what you've done is you've gone through and done a restructure, haven't you? And it's like you've spent, you know, you've, you've put a few hours in, but you've you've sort of remodeled your, your, the structure of your courses to promote sales. Yeah, yeah, I did. Um, it, one of the one of the problems uh, that a, a lot of new instructors made. I, I heard several people say this through different podcasts that um, their courses just get too big, and it, my mine was um, I, I was producing a lot of content into this one course, and I sat there and, and looked at it and I'm like, well, this is actually three 
I've got three courses here, three easily three courses of the content. So I chose to uh, split that up. And the first course I put up on Udemy, the, and the, that first course is also hosted on my site. But on my site, I have a, a bundle of all three courses. Um, and I, I also signed a uh, partnership with a company called JetBrains, which sells the uh, leading Java IDE, uh, gives the students a six month uh, subscription to JetBrains for free. That's like a $80 value. So it's so a, a real nice bundle that I, I can offer my students if they take uh, buy all three courses. And uh, I chose to put the, the first course up on Udemy because they, they've got, I think, 10 million students now, if I remember right. It's, it's, it's out of control. To, to ignore. Um, and then I have also been focusing on YouTube. Um, I have a course on Timeleaf, which is a templating engine for building web pages in, under Java and Spring. And I, I put my first uh, four modules up there, about 25, 30 videos on, on YouTube in a, a YouTube playlist uh, with, with descriptions. And I, I put a little leader saying, hey, this is part of my time leave course. And just and that's actually given me a lot more traffic on YouTube also. And uh, mm. one trick I, I heard was to use uh, URL shorteners like Bitly so you can tell where traffic's coming from. And I have a, a shortened URL to on all my videos, um, pointing back to my course site, and I can go over Bitly and, and see the traffic I'm getting from that series of videos. So, and that that's been uh, building up some nice traffic too. Awesome. Do you use do you use the same short link everywhere? Because this is something that I actually was discussing with one of my coaching clients the other day, and he's saying, "What sort of traffic do you get from Facebook versus your blog versus wherever?" And I said, "Well, to be honest with you, I don't separate it because I, I use Pretty Link." The, the, the WordPress plugin Printy Link, and I make a I make a link there, and then I just use that link on on Facebook and in my blog and everything else. So when I so when I get clicks and sales and traffic through, I'm not actually tracking the ad, the actual source. But so what you're saying with Bitly is that can you just have the one link and it, it, it tracks the source for you? Is that? Yeah, it's a different shortened URL. So I, I'm using a, a specific link for for you that YouTube okay. series of videos. Um, yeah. I, I've done newsletters. I've done other postings. I've got other, a uh, couple other playlists of videos, and those have different Bitly links in there. So I can go back and when I I figure out a, a purpose for something, uh, I give it a, a, a link. I create a link for that, so I can uh, measure the effect of what I'm doing. Yep, that's it, and that's and that's, that's a big thing. You know, we'll say to our our, our fantastic live viewers and i'd like to welcome everybody who is here live i know we've sort of been chatting for a while but i'd like to welcome everybody who's and we've actually got a first timer on blab we've got uh we've got brent and it's his first day on blab today so, so we welcome we welcome brent as well and as i'm saying please if you've got any questions at all enter them into the the chat and if they're on topic john will answer them along the way and then at the end of the formal interview we'll open up that seat and you can jump in and we can have a chat you can have a chat live and you can ask questions live but if there's any if there's any questions in particular, if there's any sort of course sales or or traffic or promotion marketing that you questions that you've got, please put them into the into the chat and we'll uh, we'll address them along the way. Okay. Hello. Right. Okay. Very good. So yeah. So just just put, just putting it out there. From the outset, it is probably a very good idea. In the past, I've used I've used trackers. I, I forget. I think one was called Hyper or something or other, and they they actually cost start to cost quite a bit of money per month, and that's why I actually stopped using those trackers. But I, I would highly recommend that if you start off do, doing what John's doing, using different links in each of the channels, then you know where your traffic's coming from. You know what's working. You know what's not working. Because the big thing we look at is everything is a test. And what you and what you do is you is you just discard what isn't working and then you scale up what is working. So it's important to know where things are coming from. Okay, so so um, what we're what so what we're talking about here is you've you've restructured your courses so you've broken them so you've broken them down into logical blocks. So, so, so they can all be part of an overall system, but people right. can buy buy pieces, and that's and that's a fantastic way. We and this is another big thing out there for people who are looking at creating a course is that sometimes you start out and you and you're really worried that you, that you're not going to have enough content 
And then as you start to build, your your course goes from an hour to two two hours. All of a sudden, it's ten hours, and all of a sudden, it's the definitive course or whatever, and it's eighteen hours. And yeah, truth I, be I known, was content, and I'm like, and I was like sixty seventy percent done with what I wanted to cover. I'm like, this thing's just <laughs> becoming used. exactly. And the other thing too is getting it to market. You know, like if if you if you just keep on building this great big great big great big, great big, like no an eighty percent course an eighty percent complete course is worth zero dollars to you, and 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 I see the same thing too when we're like because I'm looking at at Kindle books because I'm I'm looking into Kindle as being another very good marketing platform like turning your course content into a book, pointing back to your course. There's lots of uh, very successful online course creators like. Um, Rob Cubbon and, and, and Phil Ebner and many others who are, who are doing this very, very successfully. And once again, yeah. we're talking about keeping those books to about 140 pages, keeping them into like even like a one-sit read. Nobody wants to sit down and read War and Peace. We live in a very, very busy world. So to be yeah. able to, to just take bite-sized, uh, how do you eat an elephant? One bite at a time. And, and, and you give to people that one bite. It's a very good yeah, way. Yeah. I think you can say the same thing about online courses. No one wants to take a 40 or 60 hour online course. I mean, I, I don't have time to, to finish that. I mean, I, I see a lot of some of these older Udemy courses out there. They're 50, 60 hours long. It's like, man, I, who, who has time to take that long of a course? I, that would scare me away. I'd, I'd run. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Now, we, we've just got a... We've just got a, a... Jacob, please. Sorry about that. That's Something. all right. <laughs> Something spooked him. Okay. Yeah. Uh, William asks, what platform are you guys using? I started off using uh, WP Courseware. That was what I, I launched my free course on in the summer. Um, and, and what happened to me there is I upgraded plugins and it, it basically crashed access to the course. And uh, about the same time as when I discovered Fedora, which is now teachable. So I, I got into that, looked at their offerings, and switched over to that. Uh, Fedora is my my premier uh, hosting provider right now. I've um, been hosting on them since uh, end of October. Um, that their support team has been awesome. Uh, I've had a, a few issues that dumb dumb user questions and, and an occasional bug that I've had to contact the support team on, and usually get back to me in four to six hours or so, and sometimes a little bit quicker than that. So that they've been pretty good and uh, fairly accurate too. I, I started off at a, a really weird one uh, and it, it, it was a kind of a, a deeply technical one and they helped me out on that when I was first getting set up. Uh, so uh, kudos to uh, Teachable Fedora's support team. Uh, mm -hmm. Then just three, three weeks ago, yeah, yeah, January 12th, I think I, I launched a, a course on Udemy. And that, that was my my first experience with Udemy. Uh, Udemy is very very structured. They have uh, some really great support tools for instructors. Uh, they do have a quality control process. They picked up a, a low hiss in some of my videos, and probably the computer fan running uh, when I, I start start recording the the fans kick on on my my MacBook. So that I imagine that that was I got a Blue Yeti mic here, so that's probably picking that up. I, I didn't hear it audibly when I played on the the computer speakers. I don't hear it, but uh, with headphones on, it's like ah oh, yeah, there's this. Had to filter that out. And uh, Udemy has been a surprising platform. I I didn't think I'd, I'd get much traction out there, but um, I'm seeing five to fifteen students sign up a day on Udemy. So hmm. I think Udemy Udemy is. Uh... Like it, it's, it's a huge marketplace, and if you're in a, a popular niche, so and we all know that programming is is one of those niches that do extremely well mm -hmm. on 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 Udemy. There's been many a millionaire made by teaching coding. No, no the various the various platforms there. It's, it's a very very popular thing. Whereas other some some other courses don't really sell that well. So it's really a you no. Know, so yeah, Udemy. But I think everybody who's starting out should should probably should probably start by putting a course on Udemy because of that quality control. Because yeah, you, know, you, can, you, can, you can go through that process. They'll come back and say, yeah, you know your audio you know, needs a bit of work, or you know your, your lighting's off, or you know, you know your pixelating and that sort of stuff. So they'll they'll pick you up on that technical aspect, and that will teach you what you need to know then to produce quality 
going forward. He said, like, I, I personally, like the platforms I use, once again, I actually started with the same WordPress plugin and ran into to hassles. And I'm not, I'm not bagging the plugin at all. It's just a matter that when you've got to put all these different plugins together, something is inevitably going to break. Uh, I, yeah. I went to, I, I took, I went from that to, to Udemy. Now I've come back to my own site and now I'm, I'm putting my stuff on wishlist members. So I'm not even using an, L, an LMS system. And I also have courses hosted on, on Teachable. So, so, so mainly Teachable. The thing I like about Teachable is that if, if you're going to drive traffic somewhere, they're not cross promoting. So you're not, you're not spending your time and money sending somebody to a platform where they're going to then display somebody else's courses as alternatives to what you're promoting, which obviously Udemy does because Udemy is a marketplace. Yeah, yeah, that, that, that's absolutely true. And uh, that, for me, I, I think it's a, actually a, a benefit. There's a, a another another guy that's teaching courses on the Spring Framework, technically a com competitor of mine, but uh, we, we play nice together. Um, yeah. And I, I'm going to uh, give his courses some kudos and, and use my name on it. And that the way I look at it, if someone's going to learn the Spring Framework, it, it's an absolute huge framework. Um, there's 30 something projects under spring and each one's worthy of a course. And it, I, I know when I was learning spring, I didn't buy just one spring book. I had five of them sitting on my shelf. So mm -hmm. some were specialized and, and some were just generalized spring. I mean, it, different people have different perspectives and one guy's going to say one thing that'll click with you and another guy you, you know, might gloss over on. So, but That's you'll it. pick up something else from my other guy. So I, I think it's having the competition is complimentary. Yep. And same, and same thing. Like I actually have a, computer programming background, but I was sort of out of the industry. I've been out of the industry now for about 10 years. And it was the same thing that I always had more than one computer programming book on whatever language. And then, nope. and as, and as I've sort of moved through my different skill sets and professions along the way, the same thing. So never worry about competition and, and always believe that you have something unique, you have something special and you have a perspective, a viewpoint to bring, which somebody can benefit from. And, and even if they just pick up one thing, that could that could just change so much for them, and and, and improve. Yeah, yeah. So it, it absolutely does. Um, I had a, a guy uh, email me kudos. Uh, he's he's been developing for thirty years and uh, trying to pick up Java in Spring. And he's like, man, I've been looking at this stuff for a long time, just not clicking. And I took your course, and I, I'm picking it up now. And he's like, thank you so much. It clicks. I, I get it now. And he's mm -hmm. like, he couldn't thank me enough for that. So. Um, yeah, but I'm sure another guy is going to listen to me and just kind of glaze over. So, I, I mean, we connect with different people and different styles connect with different people. That's it. That's absolutely, that's absolutely it. We, we've all got something to bring to the table. Okay, is there something that in particular, like some gems in particular that you really want to share with people to sort of encourage, inspire and support them in their, uh, in their journey and, and just to show that, yes, everyday people – doing everyday things can turn their skills into into income. Yeah, I, I don't think that there's any um, barriers here. Um, I've had, uh, it, it's been definitely a journey to me. There's been a lot to learn, just like um, WordPress is probably the, the obvious choice for uh, uh, hosting a, a, type, a type of site like this. Um, I, I do have technical skills, so I mean, I, I'm running my own server on Am Amazon to host my site. Um, so I'm not using any of the, the formal hosting services. So I, I do have technical advantages over people getting in, but, um, I mean, I, I'm no expert in marketing the stuff. I, I'm no expert in web design. I actually kind of suck at web design. <laughs> so, um, you, you look at the styling on my site, I, I hired my friend's daughter to do it. I mean, she, she's an absolute genius. Uh, she actually works for Google now in their UI UX department. So I, I think I, I caught her on the way up, <laughs> but um, yeah, I mean, it, you'll, you'll reach out, you'll find a network. Um, the biggest thing for me is not, not to try to know everything. There's so many resources out there. Like your, your podcast has been huge to, to me. There, there's been a lot of other podcasts I listen to. Um, I've listened to uh, several podcasts on just the online marketing space. And I mean, it, when I, I went into like, oh, I'll just build a website, get Google traffic, and then it, it'll be there and people will come. <laughs> yeah, and, and it doesn't uh, work that so way, does it? Yeah, yeah. So, and, and then also there, there's people talking about online instruction and how people learn and uh, different techniques to learn. So it, it's been a, a huge uh, learning 
learning curve for me. I, I've learned so much in the last uh, 12 months. So it, it wasn't just like me uh, talking. I, I mean, I, I look back at some of my older stuff now, it's, it's crap. Um, you know, the introduction, uh, introduction of Spring Course that I, I use as my uh, lead magnet, I, I want to go back and just revamp the whole thing. And I've already revamped it once. At, so I, I started producing that back in March, I think, and I launched it uh, around May. And then I, I relaunched it on uh, Fedora or, or Teachable. And, uh, and I'm, I'm starting to, I want to put it on Udemy also as, as a free course. And, and in that I'm looking like, oh, this is rubbish. I need to get rid of that and redo that. <laughs> so yeah. um, as I've learned in, in producing the content, um, I, I think my, my quality standards have, have gone up. Um, I started off uh, like I, I was using the, I have a MacBook Pro here that I'm pointing out that people can't see. Um, I, I started using the camera on that, and now I have a, a Logitech camera. Um, I, I did get the microphone right, right away because I, I know the uh, NPC mics are, are crap to, to listen to. You want a quality mic for sure, and I, I upgraded the optics. Um, I, I use ScreenFlow for all my video editing, and um, yeah, that, when I first started, I mean, I, I could do some basic stuff. Now I'm, I'm more comfortable with ScreenFlow and know the tricks. I know the settings I like. I know. Bing, bing, bing. This is what I, I want them to look like. The, the call outs and, and the, the different options you have in screen flow. And uh, I've added little t tricks in there. Um, I've seen some beginning instructors, I, they have like a, a blank screen and it's just sitting there for five minutes and they're, uh, they're ramping loud. Wow, there's nothing going on. It's like, hey, you want to break that up a little bit. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> he could have had some visual learners as well. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Absolutely. So, Perfect. Okay, we'll, we'll we'll open up this seat for some some live questions in a moment. But so we're just going to sort of go back and recap some very very important information. Like saying like creating your courses, they are a lot of hard work, but they're just the beginning of your work because then the marketing comes and that's an ongoing issue. So basically, how to get traffic and traction is to produce quality content and give it away for free, and education. Like so, so creating content based on education and teaching people stuff and giving it to them for free is a very useful and, and successful marketing technique. And that way you can gather your, your your names and addresses for your for your list. The money's in the list, but it's also got to be a responsive list. You know, you can have a, a, a list of 10,000 people, but if they just sort of come in for no reason, then they're not really going to be putting their hands in their pockets. So you want a, a responsive list. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. My, my didn't, email list now, I'm completely revamping my autoresponder series on it. That, that's something I started on today is uh, revamping that because I, I, what I have out there is, isn't good enough. It, it definitely doesn't match what I know about the industry now. So that's probably going to be keeping me busy the, the rest of the week writing content for that. So right now you join my list and you get a series of five emails and then you never hear from me again <laughs> unless I have something to, to promote like a new course launch. So. Yeah. I, I definitely yeah. need to step up my game there. As I say, it's an ongoing process. Like it's, it's not just sort of you know, build it and they will come. It's, a, it's an ongoing process to, to, to be truly successful. Like if you know you, you can put a course out and you, can, and you can just drop it and you might get you know, one or two sales a week or whatever. But if you really want to start hitting some some real residual income, then you've got to put, you know, be prepared to put yeah. the work in. There's no such thing as a free lunch. There's nothing nothing easy in this world that's worthwhile. But yeah, absolutely. Creating courses yeah. Is like worthwhile. sitting back, looking back, trying to like, okay, I'm a somebody new new to this area. That I'm I'm so much. I'm, I know what Spring Batch is. I know what Spring Integration is. I I know all the 30 Spring projects. I can rather probably get at least 25 of them. Um, so I know all those projects. And I can tell exactly what they do. I can tell you a lot of times who the committers are on the projects. So. Um, but someone that just en enrolled in my course, they have no idea what uh, Spring Batch is. They don't know what Spring Integration is. So when I'm rebuilding my email, I'm thinking about that. Uh, like one subject of email, uh, who's Rod Johnson? Oh, Rod Johnson wrote this book. <laughs> He's the guy that founded the Spring Framework back in the uh, early 2000s. So wow. that's the guy that started it all. So who, who's mm -hmm. Josh Long? Josh Long is currently Pivotal's technical advocate for Spring. A uh, real, real great guy. So. I mean, this is stuff that people in my, my subject area that they don't know. I, it's common knowledge to me. 
But mm. so I'm coming up with a series of emails, just short emails. So they'll be just a few paragraphs long. Like, hey, here, here's this little nugget of knowledge in this area. And, and mm. it'll get a relationship with them and hopefully in, increase my engagement through email with these people. So when I do say, oh, by the way, I have this really cool offer that maybe they'll actually read it. <laughs> that's it. And that's it. So like, if you keep on, if it, if you keep on dropping quality content into their inbox and they're actually going to learn something and get value from it, then they're going to open it. And once this is what we're talking about, a responsive list that they go, oh, yeah, here's an email from John and I know that I'm actually going to learn something and get, going to get some value. I'm going to open that and I'm going to read it. And then because you've built that trust in the relationship, they are going to be more likely to put their hand in their pocket and yeah, put the credit card for a, for a course. And that, that engagement is also important as having people open it because the, the mail providers – uh, like Google and Yahoo, uh, their spam filters. I, I mean, they're, they're they're smart. They're picking up stuff. And if people are opening and reading those mail more, they're like, oh, this guy's actually sending quality content. We, we're not going to chuck him over to the spam bin or to the promotions tab. We'll mm -hmm. put him right in the inbox because, yeah, so-and-so always reads e emails from John. I, I'm going to move it over here for him. Correct. So that, very, that's very just going to get you to the top of their, their mailbox, and it's going to mm -hmm. increase your open rate just by mm -hmm. providing quality content. And obviously, the no, the so so you've got your audience. You've created a relationship through free content, through content marketing, through educational marketing. We call it educational marketing. You've created your list, and now what you've done is you've taken a, like a massive course. And this is a, this is the way you sell more courses. You've, you've and you've broken that into into segments, in, into workable chunks. And you've once again you've also got them to market. So once again, like if you want to create. You think about the hours involved in creating a course, and if you're going to create a course that's you know, 18, 20 hours long, it's probably going to take you six months to to create. Whereas if you create a course that's an hour and a half long, and it's in in and of itself is a project, there's something they can learn, they're getting somewhere, they're learning something, then you get that to market really quickly. They start to use it. You start to work on your next project, or you can then survey your existing students to say well, what you want next. What's your next hurdle? Yeah. And then you can create your next course. So then you have, instead of having one great big course for you know, $1,000, you can end up with 10 courses at $100. And it's going to be a lot easier to get somebody to spend $100 10 times than just to spend $1,000 once. And also then you are, people can sort of take from the menu what they want. They, no, they may not need the basics. They might be halfway through so they, so they can jump in along the way so that is a uh, uh, that's that's the strategy to sell to sell courses because then you can then cross promote yeah. your other courses to existing students and i've already seen some course sales in that because i, I had this big big behemoth of a, a course planned out and when i, I divided it up um there, there's people that are going to want the whole thing the, the whole enchilada and and go through it but there's people that also want like oh well, I already know all this. I, I know how to develop spring, but this this last piece here on building the, the green widgets, I, I need that. I need, need to do that. So you, right. you're going to, you're not only building a relationship with people, but you make your courses more modular when they have a need and they know that you have at X course and it fills that need, they're going to come back to you. Mm. So and, it's, it's a big thing. And, like if, 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 yeah. if you were, if you already got 90% of the knowledge, right? But you just need something from that, and and you're looking at a thousand dollar course, and you think, I'm not going to spend a thousand bucks just to learn that because that's a lot of money, right? Whereas if they can mm -hmm. sort of get that in like a, a ninety seven dollar course, they're going to go, yeah, that's that's worth it. So that's where you, you pick up that extra that extra knowledge. Okay, what yeah. we're going to do now, we're going to um, open up the the seat here. So we. Encourage and welcome anybody who's got any questions for either John or myself to to jump in and and have a and have a chat. And this is uh, so John has just I think last month was it hit the may broke broke the two k in a month through through course sales and yeah, basically yeah, started actually, started almost journey. broke three k. So sorry, I almost broke three k. So and I what? had a real strong sales over the weekend. Like like wow. Mm. Beautiful. See, uh, so, so and John, and, my <laughs> and John just and John just started his, his his website in January last year, right? So it's and most of your initial content was free content, wasn't it? Yes, 
Yeah. So you, I so didn't you post it. do any paid content till the end of October. So there you go. End of October. So we've got October. So we've got November, December, January. So yeah, it's, 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 a, a list. I had my free content, that, which I revamped uh, a couple times and kept adding content to that. Um, my mail list is collecting addresses, but as far as nurturing the list, I'm, something I'm still learning. So, I, I mean, I, I did not execute on that, but I mean, I, I did have a list and, and when I did launch that course, I did have people sign up on it. And, and since then, the, the people coming to my site now see that I, I have paid content. Um, I, I see people enroll in my free course and, and sometimes two hours later, they're, they're buying the full course or um, I've had, had people enroll in April but they're, they're still out there and if they come back, I just had a guy last April, he, he enrolled. It's like, I, when did this guy find me? And, oh, he, he found me back in April. I, so I haven't figured out anything. I mean, it goes from hours to, to months as to when they come back to buy. Mm -hmm. But um, I think that's part of building the relationship with the people uh, in your audience. It is. And, and it, it just goes to show that there's still... I have people that emailed me questions completely unrelated to my my course is just my opinion on this and i'm happy to help it's like hey, yeah that's what i think on this and offer my opinion and sometimes i come back and uh, become a student mm. beautiful do you want to just type your um contact details into the chat there john so it's people if, if people want to go have a look at your site have a have a look at your setup see how you see how you're doing things or we may even have some developers on uh, online who might be interested in some of your courses I'll we'll put that right. out there. That's the website there. Beautiful. And while we're still waiting, see if anybody wants to sort of pop on, pop on and have a chat. Saying, don't, don't be shy, guys. Just uh, you can click on that open seat and and jump in and and ask questions, have a chat. Uh, one thing we didn't sort of touch on in the in the main interview was the was the pre-launch, and uh, those pages are, are very useful, aren't they? When it comes to testing the waters to see where the where the main interest is. So if you if you have yeah. say three or four topics and you're not quite sure which course to start developing next, you can do what we call a, a pre-launch page. You want you want to take us through that? Yeah. Um... So I've developed out the core and there's several areas that, like I said, spring, my, my subject area, there, there's a lot of areas I could go that are, are worthy of courses. And I took the top four that I had that I, I was considering on doing courses on and I, I get periodic uh, questions from my students like, hey, are you going to do a course on this? Can you include content on that? Um, so I had these four areas that each each is worthy of a, a in-depth course on. So I created uh, pages on my website. I, and add them to my menu structure. I didn't do any type of advertising. I mean, Google's picking them up, indexing them. Um, and I, I have the outline of the course that I want to do. And at, at the bottom of the page, it says, this course is under development. Uh, please register here and I'll, I'll know you, notify you when it's ready. And um, that, I started getting emails on that. It's like within eight hours, I had uh, email people registered uh, interest in. Right now, one of the four is, is definitely showing clear interest, so I, I know exactly which one I'm going to work on next. And um, I, what's nice is I picked up uh, search engine traffic to the course pages. I picked up students, student interest, and I'm building a pre-launch list. And I know it, it's like almost better than a survey. People are registering saying, yes, I, email me when this is ready. So I, I have my launch list right there for when that course is ready. That's it. You, now you, you've got a list of, of, of of, of interested people. And interested the, thing people. Too, the thing is too, you can, I just got a bit of feedback there coming through, but you can also fund your development. You can take, take it a step further. I know when I was talking to Miguel Hernandez back when I was doing that create a successful online course, course, the one that you, you know, that you bought. And Miguel was saying that he did something very similar, but he actually had people pre-purchasing so I, I don't I don't know how much he was charging, but he he was he was gauging interest. But he was saying, you can get this now if you like if if you buy now you, you get it really really cheap. If I yep. don't, yeah. if I don't if I don't proceed with the course, I'll give you a refund. But then you no, know, you start you start get a few people interested. They even if they pay yeah. fifty bucks or whatever, <clears throat> and now it's it's actually funded your 
it's, it's funded your course and you know that you've already got a list of students there already. So the, the, the pre-launch is... Same idea too. Um, in, in the computer industry, there's a, a book publisher called Manning. I don't know if you're familiar with them, but they have uh, Manning's Early Access Program, uh, EAP, where you can buy a book as it's being developed and they'll send you PDFs as the author completes chapters. So um, I came up with a, a little branding called, uh, I call it Jeep or Guru, Guru Early Access Program. And uh, I, I put a banner on the, the course graphics saying GEAP and uh, I have a banner in there saying this is early access pricing, special pricing, heavy discounts. And um, I, I launched that. I've done some promotions where um, as I develop the course, I, I'll incrementally raise the price uh, as I get more and more content out there. But I'll, I'll say, I'll send out an email blast saying, hey, if you, if you want to get in this course, I'm going to be raising the price on Friday. I do so now, and mm. that, that, that's uh, been an effective technique for getting people in the door. Very, very good strategy. Very good strategy. Yeah. So that's that's the way. You, know, you just can just turn around and just with a bit of uh, imagination and 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 seeing what other people are doing, you can generate a lot of sales for your you know, for your courses. You're you're still mainly sending people to your teachable school. Yes, yeah, that, that, that's my primary focus. Mm. Uh, so basically, that, that, Udemy is a lead is, is a lead generator. Yeah, I, I haven't done a lot of promotion to Udemy directly. Uh, a little bit when I, I did launch my first course, I did uh, launch free coupons out to it because I I, I don't know uh, the specifics about tactics about launching on Udemy, but I'm like, hey, here, here's a free premium course on Udemy. I hope you like it. If you do like it, please give me a, a five-star rating. Uh, for me, it, I, I knew if I was a student coming in, I saw a course that had like no ratings and no students, I'm probably not going to spend any money on that course. But if it had mm -hmm. some ratings and some students that liked it, uh, to me, visually, it, that's a little more appealing because uh, as a the social proof to the, the course that people are, are buying it and like it. Mm -hmm. So I, I didn't want to have that. And it, it seemed to, to be an effective tac tactic because the course is ranking well and, and Udemy is promoting it. So mm, yes, it's good. It's good. Okay. Are there any questions? Anybody got any more questions? Does anybody want to jump in and have a chat? Otherwise, we'll uh, we'll bring this call to an end and thank John very much for his time and, and his insight and saying you can you can turn these these strategies and apply them to any topic whatsoever. So you now John's talking about the, the the Java Spring framework. So he's talking about breaking down projects into into separate um, into into separate courses. Like, yeah. uh, you, but you can you can break any subject down into logical courses and start at at, at the raw beginner and and work all the way through to the seriously advanced and just have them a nice like. Keep it to around about an hour and a half. An hour and a half, two hours content, people will sort of consume usually in one sitting. And as long as they get a result. So the so what we talk about, we talk about one problem, one solution. And so yeah. uh, at the end. Not, everything I mentioned is definitely not specific to my subject matter. Um, I'm also a triathlete. Um, hoping, hoping to do my first Ironman later this year. So. Um, That's huge. I, I've done a lot of triathlon, so I could be an expert, to a novice, and uh, swim, bike, run. Each, each one of those could be a course. Uh, you, you have something to offer in that. And all my problems of building building a list, building a website, building an audience uh, it would apply directly to that if I decided to start doing courses on triathlon. So mm -hmm. I, I could bring that down, offer free content, free tips, build a newsletter around it, uh, and then develop courses uh, on that. I see. And the same as like, like I, I like to use golf because golf is just so easy to break down. Yeah. You know, it's like, like, like instead of having the, you know, the definitive course on golf, you have, you, know, you have a, you have a course on how to drive the ball longer straighter, how to putt, how to chip and run, how to, you know, yeah. do fairway work. You know, there's so many aspects of, of whatever, whatever you do. There's so many aspects that you can, you can break down and just and hone in. And, and, and when you hone in on each aspect, in a specific course, obviously you, they're going to, it's, it's going to be focused and they're really going to get a lot of information and they're going to be able to master each of those aspects versus just rushing through a, a, a huge course and then just getting bamboozled. 
Mm-hmm. Yeah, and that, what I found out, even if you are an, an expert in the area, um, I mean, if you're going to be focusing on how to drive, uh, if you're going to be writing course content and not how to hit a long drive, you're probably going to go back and do some homework and, and brush up on your own driving skills. And, and so, it, I mean, it, it does push you to, uh, to you know, go back and uh, relearn some of the content or pick up some, some things that you forgot. So, mm-hmm. I mean, I, I've been going through through spring and my, like I said, I've made a living in, in writing spring code and, and Java code. And as I go into these modules, I'm like, yeah, that, I wrote that. I, I did exactly this 18 months ago for client A, but it's 18 months ago. And it's like, what what did, I, what did I do back there? So I got to go back and refresh my own skills and uh, so I can present it in the course. I think that's a big thing. It's like you are really going to grasp. I think if you, if you sort of learn something with the view of teaching it, I know because I've got a background in teaching as well and I used to, teach massage as well as have my private clients and and during that time when I was teaching massage my private clients were getting absolutely spoiled because my massage skills were were spot on because I had to be because I, I had to demonstrate stuff to to students and so it was yeah when you know when you're teaching you really develop a very very deep understanding of the subject matter and this is another thing that you can do too like if you're not sure what you want to teach we can always go out and you can do what we call the learn apply teach technique so you go out and you learn a new skill you apply that you put it to work you get a result and then you turn around and you teach it so there no there, there are so many ways but yeah but looking at something with the view of teaching it you really really absorb information you take it on board and you as you teach it you're reinforcing it to yourself so yeah, it makes yeah, you better in that skill. You're also going to learn from your students too, because um, my students will will scribble outside the lines, let's say, and uh, they'll come up with with questions and like, "Hey, I was trying to do this." I'm like, what are you trying to do there? And I was like, they're, they're using something that I'd never used before, and I, I like go read about it. I'm like, oh yeah, yeah, you need to do A, B, or C. So I, I mean, but they're they're still novices, and I can look at something new and and through my experience, it's like, oh yeah, this I can utilize that. So, but the you know, students will drive learning in, in different directions that, that you will, because they, they can be uh, pretty creative for you. <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. Like we, we can all, this, this is the point that we're coming to. We can all learn, everybody can learn from everybody. Uh, course yeah. instructors can learn from their students and obviously the students, it's, it's a sharing, it's a sharing thing. Mm-hmm. John, I really like to appreciate, I'd like to thank you for your time. I really appreciate you coming, coming on. It's like, a, it's the middle of the day there so i probably pulled you away from from doing something um and fortunate enough the the bending and clanging hasn't hasn't started here they're about to repaint the exterior of my building so they're starting the the pressure the pressure cleaning today apparently so for the last week i've been waking up to them creating they're putting the scaffold up outside my window and uh, they're going to start pressure cleaning so hopefully that's, they started yeah, um, <laughs> yeah well up at, up at 5 a.m this morning i actually started I started this interview with you at 6 a.m. my time, and I'm not known as being a morning person. So, if the if the eyes got a bit droopy, that's that's <laughs> why. But um, yeah, and 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 obviously that's that's, that's put a, a a little bit of a sort of a hold on my recording uh, because, mm-hmm. and and also it's thinking hot. Like you might see me sweating here at six o'clock in the morning. It's really really humid, and so yeah. when I come home from uh, so when I wait for the guys to finish their construction, then I've got kids jumping in the pool and screaming and, and shouting up to about eight o'clock, nine o'clock at night. So, you know, I've just yeah. got to bide my time and wait for, so we're, we're all faced with challenges, but yep. life goes on. So, so why, you no, know, while I can't record and do all that sort of other work, I'm doing research. So I'm working on other parts of my, yeah. A program and I'm, I'm writing sales though so i'm i'm right i'm doing a lot of writing at the moment versus recording so you just got to work yeah. within your environment that, that's something that i've found I'm, I'm still getting used to managing my own personal workflow in, in the space as far as um that, that you bring up a, a really great great point is uh just managing the workflow i mean there's there's times where you're like okay i want to focus on great great course content because that obviously as an instructor course content is huge but there's there's always always something you can be engaging with students, answering student emails, um, the the marketing, doing websites. I, I mean, um, mm-hmm. I had one of my one of my free free course. The URL was re- not resolving today. I'm like, when did that start happening? And they're getting a 404 error, 404 error on my website. So there, there's 
there's always something to do. I ran into the same challenges where I get a group of Blue Jays outside the windows and they're squawking like, great, I can't record right now um, because these birds are chattering. So I need to find something else to do. But there, there, there's always always something something to do. Mm. So, I mean, mm. it, uh, this is uh, definitely a, a four hour lifestyle, a four hour work week lifestyle that the Tim Ferriss book, but um, it's not not just like produce a course and then sit on the beach and drink mimosas. Um, there's, there's always, always work to do. And it, it's, uh, that I've been trying to learn to manage that myself as to how, how I manage that, that workflow. Mm, mm, mm. It, it, it's big. It's big. I said, it, it does, it doesn't stop with the production of the course. And, and there are other skills. If you want to be really, really successful, there are other skills you have to learn and particularly marketing and copywriting are probably two of the most important skills that you that you can learn because then with your with with your copywriting and marketing mindset you're going to put that to work into your free content into your giveaways you've got to write a course page like a like a sales page so you, you've got to persuade people nicely not not not, not sort of um you know, twist around but you've got but you've got to explain to them why they need to buy your course so these are things that you know, if you really want to be successful and start making the money, these are the, these are the skill sets that you're going to have to to learn. Yeah, yeah, absolutely, and, and it's it's all it's been a huge learning curve. I mean, uh, even taking my dog down to the dog park, I'm flipping out a podcast to, to learn learn about a subject. A podcast has been an absolute huge resource. I mean, yeah, your your series of podcasts has been tremendously helpful, but um, it, there's there's a whole series of podcasts out there that I listen to and. I keep mm. finding more every day. So it's, a, yep. uh, I'll like learn about a subject and somebody's being interviewed and like, who's this guy? Oh, they they run their own podcast on ABC. It's like, oh, I need to get smart about that too. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Like, I mean, it, the, the whole area is booming. It's, it's something, it's a very, very exciting area. It's something that you know, anybody who isn't scared of getting on a mic and in front of a, of a camera, I should really, really consider because it is something people are going to the internet more so these days to to well, learn. Even if you are nervous, I think everybody's going to be nervous getting out a, a microphone. There's a lot of instructors Absolutely. that won't do do a video like this. That they'll hide behind the screen on a PowerPoint all the time. Uh, yep. at, uh, oh, what, what's his name? The New Rainmaker podcast. He, he talked talked about uh, it's important to, to get out there and, and show your face and build that uh, engagement with students. Uh, if you mm. if you hide behind the uh, PowerPoint all the time, you, you're, you're going to lose trust. So that's it. And that's it. I, 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 I mean, I listen to myself on recording and see myself on the videos. I'm like, God, it's such a dork. <laughs> but people don't so, care. Like, like you're more judgmental than than oh, they are. Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. We're, we're, we're all our own worst critics. So. Absolutely. Okay, John. Thank you very, very much. For, no, for your time right. it's been very you, informative and inspiring once again inspiring like, everybody can do this as long as they're willing to do the work i'd like to thank everybody who's come along and attended this this podcast live i hope you all take away something of value and, and can put into your your own business and and to start creating your own online courses and obviously selling more because this is what we were talking about today is how to structure things up to sell more courses so thank you once again. Keep an eye out. Subscribe. So if, you, if if there's a little white box next to each of our names up there, just click on that and you will get notifications when we do some more interviews. And as I said, like, I bring a lot of uh, people on who are either just starting partway through their, their journey or I bring experts on. So uh, it's all, there's always something to learn from everybody. But once again, thank you very much for your time. And uh, I look forward to seeing you in the future. And once again, check out the, the podcast. I put the, the link up there earlier, but that's just ecoursedomination.com. Or you can go to the podcast page at ecoursedomination.com slash podcast. Okay. Thank you, everybody. And uh, we'll just... Thank you, everybody.